So good afternoon, good evening, and uh, we're happy Friday. Uh, today is another time to pray. We are very happy to be here to pray again on another prayer time. Uh, so quickly, we like to introduce ourselves. Uh, this is the Deep Alive Bible Church Singles, so DLBC Singles uh, group page. And we also have a YouTube channel. We're also on Instagram. Uh, so we have these different handles where we drop nuggets, tips about Christian relationship, how to court efficiently, how to find the right partner, how to know that you are doing the right thing, you know, how to help those people who do not know how to even know um, when God is speaking. So, you know, just advice and tips that some of us have as experiences and prayerfully answering questions of different people who come up with their with their questions. So uh, today again, uh, we are meeting again, but today is specifically for prayer. We pray once every first Friday of the month. Once every first Friday of the month is our prayer time. It's a, it's a practically a one hour time with the Lord. And we spend it at the feet of Christ. And I can tell you that this prayer is not only for singles. It has also blessed a lot of um, married people. Uh, like this prayer also addresses married people and all our problems. And any problem that you might have, you can bring it to, uh, to this prayer uh, meeting. And if you have prayer requests ahead of time, you can always, always send us those prayer requests in uh, private chats. And we will also be raising those prayer requests. Um, so without wasting too much time, I welcome you to our August edition of the Night Vigil or Prayer Time, Let Them Marry, which we are holding right away. And I'd like to also um, indulge or remind Brian me, please, let's remember to pray for that lady who fell down. Uh, it's going on on the group. People are raising prayer altars for her. She fell down on campus and I think they said she's having internal bleeding, internal bleeding in her brain. Yeah, so we're just, everybody has been praying for her virtually. I've prayed for her today. And if we can bring it up to the Lord and we all pray together, I believe that the Lord is going to do something miraculous and turn the bleeding um, around, I mean, stop the bleeding completely, surprise even the doctors. Yeah, over to you, Brayemi. And I hope that we're all blessed at this prayer meetings and tell your friends about it invite as many as you as you know that this is a time with the lord you know sometimes it's good it's better to pray together it helps and fosters um the prayer fire the fire of prayer and helps us to pray you know when we pray together i'm praying i'm encouraging the other person the other person's prayer is encouraging me as well so over to you brian me the floor is yours praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I really thank you for the opportunity we have once again to uh, be around this eighth month in the year 2022 for this uh, prayer program. And it's a good thing when men pray. The Bible says we should remember to lift up holy hands together in prayer. So prayers have always been a weapon of victory for the people of God, right? from the Genesis. You see, when the Bible says, right from the day of Sheth, men began to call upon God. And that alone inspires us that prayer has been on from the Genesis. We've seen people praying and been answered by God from the book of Genesis. So uh, it's a good thing we are doing is biblical. It's also in tandem with the word of the living God. There are promises that covers prayer. The Bible says, or oh, Jesus said, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So that's a promise to tell us that God answers prayers. And I believe that as we pray to God today, uh, the Lord will bless us abundantly. And also, he will give us special testimonies in Jesus' name. 
I want us to close our eyes and be in the mood of worship as we sing some of a few songs to praise God, to worship God. Uh, it's a good thing, the Bible says, to give thanks unto the Lord. So we begin by just praying, and after that we go to the time of worship. Shall we pray together? Almighty Jesus, we gracefully appreciate you because it's not by our power that we have kept ourselves in life. It's you who has kept us. The Bible says it is we who are kept by the power of God. Despite all that is happening all around in this world, you have been so merciful and kind to us. We appreciate this goodness of yours in our life. And we say, Father, accept our thanks and our praises in Jesus' name. There are periods that Satan has choked to weigh us down, to discourage us, to show to us in his own way that our God is not a good God. But we have understood far ahead of the time that Satan came that God is good and that it's not only good, but it's good all the time. We praise your name for your goodness and we worship you for how wonderful we have been experiencing this goodness in our lives. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Here we are again this month to have our prayer time. I'm asking, Father, that in a different way today, you will come and visit everyone that joins in this prayer time in Jesus' name. Everyone will be touched. Everyone will be blessed. Everyone will be given their testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. I want you to close your eyes before we go to the, the word. I want you to just praise the name of God. I want you to just worship the name of God. What's the name of God? Adore the name of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I want you to personally just appreciate God for something or some things good in your life. The hand of God that you have seen. The miracles of God that you have witnessed. The presence of God that you have observed. I want you to praise the name of God, worship the name of God, and give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Tell him that, Lord, I just praise your name. Oh God, I just worship you. Appreciate God for something good in a minute or two. And then we go to the sharing of the word and thereafter to the prayers. I want you to just thank God. The Bible says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. So because it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, I want you to give him thanks. I want you to give him praises and blessings. Appreciate the most high. Exalt the King of Kings. Exalt the Lord of Lords. And yes, just, just thank him for his wonders, for his miracles, for his blessings, for his help, for his love, for his kindness. Thank him for a new month. And today, been the sixth day or fifth day, as the case may be, in the month, just say thank you, Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed lord we appreciate you for all that you have done for us and in in in, in appreciation we are presenting our gratitude to you accept our thanks and our praises in jesus name lord i ask that as we share your word your word will give light to every one of us encouragement faith as well as confidence in the most high in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless us abundantly, Lord, as we share. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for the grace that we have to come to this prayer once again. It is time to just discuss the word of God, which will form the bedrock of our prayer this day. And uh, even though the, the, the theme of this prayer, prayer is often captured as let them marry 
it's been said that it does not concern only married people it's for all this is the prayer platform or the prayer arrangement of the deeper life bible church uh, singles group so you can see that all that happens in the group does not only belongs to singles alone is the general is general you hear of things that happen to married people there and sometimes social and uh, also uh, religious issues so it's not only for the singles just that by the name implies so the same to the prayers the prayer concerns everyone with that notion in mind i would like us to uh, pray here today on what i would like to talk get getting your expectation see so uh the book of proverbs chapter 23 verse 18 is where we are going to see briefly proverbs chapter 23 verse 18 the bible says in proverbs 23 verse 18 for surely there is an end and an expectation shall not be cut off so surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off i thought somebody there is going to shout amen yeah that amen confirms that word in your life in jesus name there is an end everything has an end the bible says that there is time for everything in, in the world time for everything so there's a time to be born there's a time to die there's a time to start there's a time to end everything has an end praise the lord so is clearly saying something very very succinct he says for surely there is an end and that is why i want to tell you uh, maybe you, you you are having some challenges you have been praying about something and that thing has not come to pass there's an end to your trouble there's an end to your sorrow there is an end to that challenge there's an end to what you do not want anymore there's an end to the prayer request that you have been hammering to god i mean one day is coming that that prayer point will no more be a prayer point it will rather be a testimony there is an end surely is certain certainly there is an end either the the the, the devil likes it or not there is an end it's not going to be like that forever it's not going to be like that throughout eternity there's an end for what you have been asking god about and then for you to confirm that you can see incidents in your life you can see things in your life that are suggested and that has proven things that have bothered you things that are and you thought that will i ever come out of this thing will i ever have this request granted will i ever get to this stage in my life those things now you look back and then you've seen that you have passed those stages you have conquered those giants you have overcome those things but then when it was still on as a challenge we were thinking that will i ever surmount but here you have to be there came a hand to that and hand to those things and you now have a new song to sing about them a new story to tell about them and i tell you the same thing no matter what you are passing through presently and no matter what you are still going to pass through don't be bothered don't be perturbed don't be disturbed for surely certainly there is an end and by the grace of god that end will be good for you in jesus name now is for surely there is an end that's the first part for surely there is an end if you look at it say for surely there is an end and an expectation shall not be cut say so the fact that there's an end an end does not say uh, whatsoever well whatsoever anything can happen at the end no because if you just stop there and say for surely there is an end that means anything can happen at the end. you can come to the end and find out that what you have at the end is not what you like you can come to the end and so at the end of everything is i'm disappointed at the end of everything i'm frustrated after trying after hoping after expecting after believing after praying at the end i just i'm i'm still sad and sorrowful no it's going to happen that's why that second part is there it said 
Tu only there is an hand, but at the hand you will find that your expectation shall not be cut off. Somebody there, I prophesy to your life. Your expectation at the hand shall not be cut off in Jesus' name. That's why, as a person, you must have good expectation about your marriage. Have good expectation about you to marry. Have a good expectation of how your home will be, how your husband will be, how your wife will be. And if you are married, have a good expectation, no matter what you are facing presently in your home, have a good expectation that financially we are going to get to our promised land. Maybe you're having some some bad time with your wife, with your husband. Have a good expectation that very, very soon um, we are going to overcome this. Don't have a bad expectation that oh, the worst we come, we are going to we are going to we are going to separate. The worst we come, we are going to divorce. No, that's a bad expectation. The worst we come. Uh, I'll take part of the children. He will also take part of the children. We dissolve the home. No, I have a good expectation that at the end, that challenge in your marriage will soon end. Yeah, maybe it's even financial crisis in your marriage, or you are not even married, or you are having financial, and there's no there's no green light. Everything is red light. Danger, danger. That is going to be worse. It's going to be worse. That's all you are seeing. You have not seen an encouragement that it will it will be better because every effort every 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 uh trial that you have made have just been plunging you into deeper financial crisis you have to borrow from one to pay the other and the other whatever you you have you have owed here and there financial is rough and tough on you i want to tell you that after know that there will be an end but the end is that you are not just going to be free from death at the end you are going to be a lender the bible says you shall lend to many nations although he was talking to the nation of israel that they will lend to many nations but as an individual if you personalize it then you will be lending to people you'll be lending to organizations your your, your company your organization will be lending to organ, other organizations so it's as pure as that there's an end and at the end your expectation will not be cut off one more time, I prophesy into your life. Your expectation shall not be cut off in Jesus' name. Ah, uh, I want you to know something that expect that there, there are four things that I outlined here. Five things that I outlined there, four negative and one positive that can happen to expectation. Number one, expectation can be delayed. You see that in the life of King David. King David was on his own. He, he wasn't vying for the throne. He wasn't campaigning to be a king. In fact, he was even in the bush. All his father's children, sons, had paraded before Samuel. God did not choose any one of them. Samuel ordered that no one sits down until that one you said is in the is in the bush will come. Everyone stands and they stood until his arrival. And then uh, Samuel, the, the prophet of God, national prophet, anointed him and he became a king. But do you know something? Immediately the oil of anointing landed on his head. Look at the next, that was chapter 16 of 1 Samuel. Look at chapter 17, Goliath came. He had to fight a Goliath. After fighting Goliath, the king of the whole land, that was in the presence of Saul, became his arch enemy. The, Saul will leave the throne and be pursuing David all about. In fact, it came to a certain time. David was so depressed. David was so dis, dis, disjointed, disgruntled. He was. He, he, he didn't know what to do. He had to go to the king of Gath. You know the king of Gath? That was the king of Goliath that David killed. Goliath was their champion that they believed that once Goliath killed the the, the anchor man of Israel. Israel was going to be a slave to the Philistines. It was David that killed that Goliath and delivered Israel. So David was a very great enemy to the Philistines, most especially to the king of Gath. But he was so frustrated. He had to go to the king of Gath. He didn't know what to do. A confusion set in. And then they captured him. They took him to the king. He had to behave like a madman. The king said, I don't need a madman. Take this man away. So he yeah, he expected that after anointing on his head as a king, he was going to be a king, but he was delayed. It took so many years, so very many years, before eventually the king Saul died, and then he had to the, the, he had to consult the people of Judah. They made him the king of Judah, and like three and a half years later, 
he became the king of the whole house of Israel. Even though he was delayed, but his expectation was not cut off. I repeat again, your expectation will not be cut off in Jesus' name. So it's part of it. If your expectation is delayed, don't be bothered. Don't be don't don't give up. It can be delayed. Number two, expectations can be denied. So some people do outright denial of expectation. Outright denial of expectation. If you read the book of uh, uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter seven, Stephen was given an account and a rundown of what happened in the land of Israel, to the in the history of the children of Israel. So he was telling them that at a certain time, when Moses was born, he lived forty after forty a full forty years. He said in that place, he said he went out to 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 see his brethren, and he saw an Egyptian killing or punishing an Israel. He killed that Egyptian. So he, the Bible says, he was assuming that they would know that God has made him a deliverer to them. So the next day when he got saw two people fighting, he just assumed, he expected that they, they were going to understand that, oh, this man is our deliverer. But no, they denied him. In fact, he had to run away from Egypt. For 40 years, he was denied. So expectation at times can be denied. But never mind. Even if you are denied expectation, it didn't mean that it will never come to pass again. Because God is the one that can do all things, that owns all things in his hand. He's the one that owns the giving of the expectation, the delivering of the expectation in his hand. So even if you are delayed, de denied, and it seems it can never happen again, do you know that after 40 years, he didn't even know he was a old man already, very old, 80 years. God just went to look for him inside the bush of Midian, where he was, at the back of the desert. Only him alone. He has changed, his life has changed, his purpose in life has changed, his, his plan for life has changed. He did not know, he, he was not even thinking about delivering any, any, any family, not to talk of a whole nation again. But at that point in time, God gave him that assignment. Even though he was denied, he still became a deliverer, a mighty deliverer of the children of Israel. Now, expectation number three can be deprived. It can be deprived. If you look at the book of uh, Matthew chapter 21 from verse around 33 to around 40, Jesus our Lord spoke a parable there of a, of a man that had a vineyard and gave it to husband man. And then he was expecting when the time of harvest came that they were going to, oh, so oh, this our master, uh, the owner has come to take something. He has sent his, his uh, servant. So let's give him some, let's give him a uh, part of this harvest. That was his expectation. Do you know he was deprived? He sent the second servant. They, they beat that one. They killed some others. At the last, he sent his son. And then they said, oh, this is his heir. Let's see. They killed the son. So he was deprived of his expectation. But at the end of everything, uh, the Bible says, what will he? He will destroy all those old men and he will take his vineyard back. And then he was only asking for parts and they were denying him. He will have everything as a whole. So that expectation will still happen in the name of Jesus. And number four, expectations can be destroyed. If you if you if you look at the book of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 20, the Bible says the expectation of the wicked shall perish. So uh, yes, that's the portion of the wicked. But if if a, 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 a person that is not wicked is not careful, his expectation too might perish. So that's why you have to you have to make sure that your expectation is that is being delayed, that is being denied, that is being deprived you, does not eventually perish. I pray for everyone here, listening to the voice of this word, your expectation shall not perish in Jesus' name. But lastly, mm -hmm. expectation can be delivered. In the book of Daniel chapter three, from verse 14 to 17, uh, the, uh, the children, three which children were challenged by Nebuchadnezzar. As I round off this, uh, this uh, session and we go into prayers. They were challenged by Nebuchadnezzar and they told him, they said, okay, we are not careful to answer you in this matter of bowing down to any idol. Our God that we serve is able to deliver us. That was what they said in verse 17. They said, our God that we serve is able to deliver us. And do you know that God delivered their expectation to them? Now, deliver, deliver, that's number five. Expectation can be delivered to you. You can have it. You can get it. God can deliver. God can give it to you. So that's number five. So eventually, 
If you read verse 24 to 27, you will see that God delivered them. Inside the fire, they were just going about no harm. And the king was surprised. He said, we sent for three people here. There are four people here. How come? Observing, I can see Chidra, I can see Meshach, I can see Abednego. Ah, this fourth person, the way I'm looking at him is, is the, the appearance is like the son of God. And then if God said, oh, Shidra, Meshach, and Abednego, come out of that place where you are. And they came out. The Bible says that the governor, the satrap, and all the king chancellors and council, they saw these men who the fire had no power. They are their, their clothes did not smell of fire, neither did an air of their body singed. So God delivered them and, and then he delivered their expectation into their hands. So God can also do that. They expected that our God that we serve, the way we have known him, the way we have related with him, the way we have served him, he will deliver us. And then God gave them their expectation. He delivered their expectation into us. So that is the level we have come tonight the level of God delivering our expectation into our hand so that our expectation cannot be cut off, will not be cut off. I don't know what you have been expecting, that you have been praying about, that you have been believing God for, that you have been trusting the Lord for. This prayer time is focused and directed on those expectations being fulfilled. Now, I'll mention something in the course of the prayer that relates to what we are discussing. But now I just want us to trust God and believe him. You see, as we pray, uh, you will do yourself much of good if you are listening to this uh, word and you have not genuinely given your life to Jesus Christ. There is this sin here and there in your life. You are not genuinely free from sin. You will do yourself a lot of good by giving your life to Jesus Christ. Because it is on that platform of salvation that God can deliver your expectation to you. Don't bother yourself to be thinking the other way around. It's not compulsory. If I'm not born again, if God wants to bless me, he will bless me. Oh, you are getting it wrong. Why should you be saying, if he wants to bless you, he will bless you? Does that mean that God does not want to bless you? Come to the state that you will know that God wants to bless me. And he will bless me. Not if he wants to bless me, he will bless me. Because I am sure as a person that by the grace of God, I have come to a level that God will surely bless me. And a lot of you, God will surely bless you. So you give your life to Jesus Christ, make him your Lord and Savior, and he will bless you. And at the end, your expectation shall not be cut off in Jesus' name. So you can take everyone by your head. It's time to pray. You can, you can begin to pray to God and say, Lord, I want you to have mercy on me. I want you to forgive me my sins. I want you to write my name in the book of life. I want you to make me your child. I want you to make me one of your children. No more an hired servant. No more someone that is not confident and sure of his stand in the, in the family of God and in the kingdom of God. Lord, I want salvation for my soul. Pray and the Lord will have mercy on you. As you are praying that prayer, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, it very well. Uh, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, say, Lord Jesus, I know that you love me and I am taking this time to pray that you will forgive me, that you will pardon me. I accept Jesus into my life. I receive him as my Lord and Savior. And by your grace, Lord, I will make it to heaven. Give me power over sin. I believe you have done it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Now, everyone, let's begin to worship the name of God and say, Father, I thank you for your word. I bless your name because your word has made it very clear to me that my expectation shall not be cut off. My expectation shall not be cut off. Instead of my expectation being cut off, I bless you, Lord, because my expectation will be delivered to my hand. My expectation will be handed over to me. My expectation will be given to me. Oh, Lord, I praise you. Oh, Lord, I worship you. Oh Lord, I thank you. Oh Lord, I give glory unto your name. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Number one, I want you to pray to God that from today, faith to trust God 
that my expectation will be fulfilled. Holy Spirit, give to my heart in Jesus' name. Pray in the name of Jesus. So many people have prayed on some issues and it's as if their expectation on that matter is cut off. Some people have even left praying. But I want you to pray and say, God, maybe you have prayed on something, you have given up praying or you are still praying about it. I want you to pray to God and say, Father, inspire faith in my heart today to trust you that my expectation cannot be cut off. Do you know without faith, it is impossible to please God? By faith is when you can please God. So, Father, put faith in my heart. Put faith in my heart. So, I believe that you can do what you have said. That you can grant my expectation. That you can give me my expectation. You can deliver my expectation into my hand. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You see, even if you are sick and it's like a terminal disease and it's as if you cannot be healed, it's as if there's no hope for you, I want to tell you that God is the healer. And if you are there, I want you to believe God. I, 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 I pray for you that the power of the Most High God will descend upon your life and every root of sickness I root them out of you today by the power in Jesus' name. I command your cancer to dry. I command your ulcer to disappear. I decree that your rising blood, blood prayer, will normalize by the power in the name of Jesus. I decree that whatsoever is going wrong with your brain, whatsoever is going on with your mind, and you can't think straight, and you can't think normally, you are knowing within yourself that you are thinking abnormally, you are reasoning abnormally. I command every abnormality in your reasoning and in your thought process to get out now in the name of Jesus. I decree that you should be re we should be normal in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray by the power of God, you are normal in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's continue our prayer. You see, we want to pray. He said, surely there is an end. I want you to say, oh God, put an end to all my sorrow in the name of Jesus. What is your sorrow? I want you to pray and say, Father, put an end to all my sorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. Put an end to all my problems and all my challenges in the name of Jesus. And you can be very specific. What is that challenge that you have? Is it a marital challenge? Is it a spiritual challenge? Is it a physical challenge? Is it a material challenge? Financial challenge? Whatsoever it is. The Bible says, surely there is an end. I want you to pray and say, Father, let an end come to my sorrow in the name of Jesus. Let an end come to my trouble in the mighty name of Jesus. Let an end come to my challenge in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. For surely there is an end. I want you to pray and say, Father, power saying my sorrow will not end. Power saying my troubles will not end. When the Bible says surely there is an end, Father, power saying my challenges will not end. Let them be wasted away now in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Power saying my challenges will not end. Power saying my problems, my sorrows, my challenges, my troubles will not end. When the Bible says surely there is an end, let them be wasted away. Let them be wasted away tonight, tonight as a result of this prayer. Let them be wasted away in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them be wasted away in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Your sorrow will end. I said your sorrow will end. Shout a louder and confirmation, amen. Your sorrow will end in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the Bible says, surely there is an end. There is an end. Uh, you know, some time ago, many years ago, I'm talking about something that happened around 2010 or 2011. I used to know someone, a person, 
in our, back those days when we were in, in the university, this person used to palsy very well, very well, very, very well. So uh, he got to a certain time, he got to a certain time, that time we had even left school, we had even left the institution, but I was still in touch with this person. So, and the father became concerned. What is the problem? What's wrong with this, my daughter? So they, they, they eventually they, they treated this, treated that, treated this, treated that, and they were tired of all, all sorts of treatment. So they decided that they even took her to, to, to place, to, to different places where they would treat this by that drug uh, recommendation. They were tired. So they now decided that the, the last result we are going to do now that we're going to do a general uh, examination of this person's body. So it was at, at that process that she called me. It was one night, just a night like this, just a night like this. She just called me overnight and she explained to me that now they've decided that they wanted to go for a general uh, uh, body check and uh, everything. It was going to cost them money. So I said, no problem. Then I decided, as led by the Spirit of God, to pray for her. I prayed seriously. It was warfare, it was deliverance. I prayed seriously. Do you know something? That God answered that prayer. Today, God will answer our prayer. I cannot hear your amen very well. Amen. He will in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The next day, the next day she sent a message. She, 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 that time, even, you know, uh, Android phone was not even available. You only have a, a very few phones that can take pictures. So the pictures that she sent was not even very clear. By the time she slept after the prayer and she woke up, just like you are going to sleep after this prayer and wake up to your miracle in the Amen. mighty name. Amen. By the time she woke up in the morning, do you know what she found out? She just found out that her body was swollen. So it was a surprise to move to the house. It was a clear surprise. Because they knew when she slept that she was not, not nothing was wrong with her. Only for her to move her face swollen, her eyes swollen, everywhere was swollen. But she knew what had happened overnight. Do you do you know that up till this time, I'm talking about something that happened over 12 years ago, up till now, she had not gone for that general checkup. After that prayer, he came okay, him well, and by the grace of God, that how God fulfilled that expectation. I prophesy into your life, your expectation shall not be cut off in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, I want you to say, My expectation be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. My expectation be fulfilled. In the mighty name of Jesus, my my expectation I command you to manifest my manifest my manifest my manifest my manifest my we are still coming to pray that prayer one more time. But do you know I told you that expectation can be delayed? I want you to pray this next prayer. My expectation in the valley of delay. I command you, come out of that valley in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. I command you, come out. His time is now. You've seen what I've missed your God. I've missed your God. 
We have the sufficient in the body of the day. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. His time is time. He said, He must come. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Come out the mighty name of Jesus. Come out in 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 the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I told you that expectations can be denied. Expectations can be denied. I want you to pray. My expectation in the wilderness of denial. Come out and manifest in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. My expectation in the wilderness of denial. My expectation, like the children of Israel, they were denied. Entrance into the promised land. In the wilderness, they just continue and continue in the wilderness of denial. I command you manifest by the leader of the place of denial. You cannot be denied anymore. You cannot be denied anymore. Oh, today I pray you expectation of mine. I want you to begin to know what are your expectations. You can begin to mention this. Okay. Amen. Pray for expectation. Expectation that is defined. Maybe you have been expecting to have something, but some people have been depriving you of that thing. They've been depriving you of something that you know is yours. You have been expecting it, but they've been depriving it. The custody of the custody where they kept that place. You want to leave from people who have to pray. The custody of the mayor. The, sorry, the custody of the privation. The expectation is coming in the name of Jesus. I want you to say, Oh Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I wish you the mighty of Jesus. In the custody of deprivation, the situation of my family, in the custody of deprivation, I command you come out and manifest. Come out and manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. Come out and manifest. My message before we go to the other side of the prayer i want you to pray that your expectation will not be destroyed decree in the name of jesus i decree over my life i decree over my family my expectation will not be destroyed in the mighty name of jesus i decree over my destiny i decree over my career i decree over my children over my husband over my spirit over my family i decree my expectation will not be destroyed my expectation will not be destroyed this will not be sufficient. I seek out of my life. I seek out of my life. I over my career, my situation will never be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. I offer you this night. You will never be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. My situation will never be destroyed. Amen. We are prayed. You know, I told you that expectation can be delivered delivered to your hand it's like you buy something and it's delivered to you oh i heard that for that thing online and they've delivered it say so after you receive your delivery there's somebody here today if you shout a confirmation amen you will receive the delivery of your expectation before the next prayer comes up in the name of jesus amen in the mighty name of jesus but before we pray that prayer, we have prayed it two times. But I'm going to pray it one more time. Before we pray that prayer, I told you while I was going through the world that there's something that during the prayer I will, will mention. You see, let me tell you something. There's what the Bible describes as there's something that we can call expectation of the wicked. If you read the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 11, when Peter came out of the prison that Herod had kept him, 
The Bible said, intending, expecting after Easter, it would have killed him. But to the by the mercy of God, he was just Easter time. So he didn't want to kill anybody Easter. So he kept him in prison. But the Peter therefore was kept in prison. When he saw that killing James, the Jews loved it. He kept prison, intending, expecting after Easter to kill him. But a night before Peter would be killed, just one night before he would be killed, the angel of the Lord was sent a message from heaven. Somebody there, God will raise send an angel a message from heaven on your behalf in the name of Jesus. God Amen. sent an angel on behalf of Peter. He delivered Peter from the prison. And Peter was like, um, was I dreaming? What just happened now? Is it true? The Bible now said that when he came to himself, he said, now I know that God has delivered me from the expectation of the Jews. Expectation of the Jews. That expectation of the wicked. They wanted to kill him like they killed his master, the Lord Jesus. Like they killed his brother, James. Like they killed the bro- like James, the brother of John. But God delivered him from the expectation of it. Just two prayer points. Then we'll do one more and then we'll round up tonight. Because our time is almost up. I want you to pray. Expectation of the wicked over my life and destiny. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every father, every expectation of the enemy. Over my life, over my destiny, over my family, over my career. This is catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, my head is the decision of the devil. Over my life, over the situation of the wicked. Over my life, over my family, over my destiny. Over my family. Catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Pray. You see, Amen. there's somebody there. there, there before you married, there were expectations about your marriage by, by the wicked. And if you are not careful, that expectation will come to pass. So you have to fight for it. That that, that expectation about my marriage that's already playing out will not marry, will not, not manifest. So generally, everybody, maybe there's an expectation about you that you will not you will not prosper in life, expectation of the wicked, or that you will not you will not be able to achieve your potential, or that you will not be happy. What's the right expectation? One more time. I want you to pray. Expectation of the wicked over my life. Huh? Expectation of the wicked over my destiny. Expectation of the wicked over my family. Expectation of the wicked over my marriage. Expectation of the wicked over my career. Expectation of the wicked over my finance. Expectation of the wicked over my life. Expectation of the wicked over my destiny. Expectation of the wicked over my destiny. Expectation of the wicked over my marriage. Expectation of the wicked over my career. Expectation of the wicked over my finance. Expectation of the wicked over my destiny. Expectation of the wicked over my destiny. Expectation of the wicked over my marriage. Expectation of the wicked over my destiny. Expectation of the wicked over my career. Expectation of the wicked over my finance. Expectation of the wicked over my destiny. Expectation of the wicked over my marriage. Expectation of the wicked over my destiny. Expectation of the wicked over my career. Expectation over my financial life, over my career life, God, for you need the mighty name of Jesus. Over my family, over my marriage, every expectation of the wicked. God, for you need the mighty name of Jesus. God, for you need the mighty name of Jesus. God, for you every expectation of the wicked. Amen. Do you sometimes for expectation to be fulfilled and do a lot of things? Two of the things that God can do, we are going to use them to pray one after the other. One of them is that God can send someone to help that expectation to be fulfilled. If you look at the journey of the life of David, eventually when David when when, when David was to be made king, some people rose up. They, 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 they just put in their life on the line to make sure that David became king. One of them was Abner also. Uh, Abner, I think Abner or some, somebody he, he had he put in the process he died he was supporting the, or he, was the, he was the power behind the son of Saul that was king over Israel when David was king over Israel but God scattered their arrangement and then he became a supporter God will raise up someone to make sure your expectation comes to pass to pray this year you are going to pray my father Raise up, 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 raise up
covering in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my God, raise up people that will make a petition to manifest in my life. Raise up people that will make a petition to manifest in my family. Raise up people that will make a petition to manifest in my marriage, in my life, in my destiny. Raise up people. Raise up people in the mighty name of Jesus. Raise up people that will make a petition to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You can do a lot of make expectation to yes. come to pass. But I'm going to yes. pray only on two things. Number one, he can raise up people. He can raise up circumstances. He can raise up situations that will just help that expectation to come to pass. One of them was that he made in the life of David, he made Saul to die in a battle. Saul just unexpectedly in, in a battle like that. You see? So but that was what paved the way for the for the for the for the emergence of David as a king. Because as long as Saul, the anointed of the Lord, even though he had gone astray, was on the throne, David himself that had the anointing will not keep the Lord's anointed, not to talk of other people. So it's as but God raised up situation and then he died and he became king. Now another thing that God can do is that he can perform different miracles. Your expectation can be delivered into your life. Your expectation can come to pass. So your expectations are not not be cut off in the in the time of uh, of children. He he turned their body. He said that yielded their body. He said he yielded their body that the fire and the power of God. It's a wonderful miracle. And someone has fire and the born and his spirit will not burn, and the hair of his head will not sink, and the smell of fire will not have passed over the clothes. If the confirmation, amen. God will perform in your life in Jesus' name. I want to be present. My expectation to manifestation perform in my life in the name of Jesus. The miracle that will bring my expectation. The miracle that will bring my expectation. Manifestation. Let it happen in my life and in my family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Miracle that will bring my expectation to manifestation. Let it happen in my life. Let it happen in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Happen in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, happen in my life. Miracle that will bring my expectation to manifestation. Miracle my hand that will bring about a joy. Miracle that will bring my expectation to manifestation in my life, in my family. That will bring people happen in my family. Let it happen in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it happen in my family. Let it happen in my finances, in my let it happen in my marriage. Let it happen in my Prayer now. Pray the last prayer, which I said we are going to pray once more. I want you to pray. The only book. Bring my in the name of Jesus. That is the last prayer. Holy Ghost, bring my expectation to pass. Holy Ghost, bring my expectation to pass. Holy Spirit of God, bring my expectation to pass. By miracle, by signs, by wonders, by help, by deliverance, by 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 the touch of God. Every way, every how, bring my expectation to pass. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Lord has done it. The Lord has answered our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe God has answered your prayers, I want you to begin to worship the name of God. Because I assure you, as the Bible says, the word of God, your expectations shall not be cut off. Begin to say, Father, I thank you. Father, I worship your name. Father, I exalt you. Father, I give glory unto your name. Father, I give praises unto your name. Your expectation, my expectation shall not be cut off. I really thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Shall we pray together? Almighty Father, I thank you because of everyone that I prayed today. Lord, I release this word of power 
into the life of everyone. Any power delaying your expectation, any power making your expectation to be denied, let them resign every activity in your life now in the name of Jesus. I command them to resign. I say, I speak to you, resign your activity tonight, now, now, in the name of Jesus. Every conglomeration of witchcraft against your life, by the power in the name of Jesus, I disband them. I disband them. I disintegrate them in the name of Jesus. I am praying your expectations, yes, in the valley of delay, Mm, I command it to come out of that valley of delay and manifest in Jesus' name. Your expectation in the wilderness of denial, I command that expectation to come out of the wilderness of denial and manifest by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Your expectation in the custody of deprivation, I command that expectation to be released from custody of deprivation. And I command it to manifest now by the mighty power of God. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to your life, your expectation shall not be destroyed. Your expectation shall never be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, expectation of the wicked over your life, I command them to perish in the name of Jesus. Expectation of the wicked over your destiny, over your marriage, you that person that before you even married, there have been there are people that are wicked that have been expecting that that marriage will not work and it has not worked. I command, and you are already praying, my children will not have this kind of marriage that I'm having. Ah, I decree by the mighty power of God. Don't, don't allow their expectation to come to pass over you. I command that by the mighty power of God, you will understand the device of the wicked. You will not give them that chance to say, it will work in the name of Jesus. Your expectation, the expectation of the wicked over that marriage will be destroyed in Jesus' name. The expectation of the wicked over your finance, that you will not prosper, that you will be poor, that even if other people are making it, you are going to struggle till you die. That expectation, I destroy it. Expectation of the wicked over your career. Expectation of the wicked over your health. I command that expectation to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I destroy that expectation by the power in the name of Jesus. I command the expectation of God for your life, for my life, for every life. Let that expectation of God come to pass in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. Yes, the expectation of the Lord that shall manifest. Let the expectation of God manifest in the name of Jesus. Every help, every assistance, human help, the help and assistance that your expectation needs to manifest. Receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Every Amen. Every divine intervention, miraculous divine interventions, wonders, traditions, it will manifest. Command you to act in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The blood of Jesus. I took every prayer, Lord of Jesus. Lead us into the abundant world. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you name. Amen. It's the Lord. Hallelujah. I hand over to uh, uh, our anchor, uh, uh, Sister Princess. I want to everyone who has participated in the program that we should keep coming every time and we should always tell people about it. Uh, I told us last week, I'm sorry, last month, that we should try as much as possible to do something. You see our anchors, they will all me, they will always put it on the platform. This month is our prayer. Those of us that participate, those of us that are part of it, that watched it, that uh, 
prayed the prayer, let's also comment on it. And the Lord will answer in Jesus' name. So the last thing we are going to do, I read it just a few hours ago, maybe late last night, about that sister that said she fell down. I've not seen it before. I just read it that night, last night. Then she fell down. And when I say last night, you know, we are in, in Nigeria. We are just around a few minutes past one, around 10, 11 minutes past one. So I read it uh, around 9, 10 or 11 or there or 8. I've forgotten that time. So she said she fell down. And then, no, somebody said a friend fell down. And the friend, uh, when they went to the hospital, they discovered that there is brain problem. There's blood in the brain and is bleeding in the brain and all that i want us to pray for that person just one prayer you are going to pray that the angel of uh, sorry the angel of a miracle you see there's an angel of miracle that god normally sent he sent one to manua go and tell about the delivery of someone something rather he sent one to, 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 to Mary to go and tell Mary about the delivery of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to open your mouth and pray from your heart that the angel of a miracle, the angel of our healing, Almighty God, will send that angel on an assignment to her, wheresoever she is now, to go and give her a miracle in the name of Jesus. She is precious. I looked at her picture, she's looking good. She, the other sister even says she, she, she uses her as a model of dressing in her pictures or in her profile or something like that. Someone like that want to pray that every arrangement of Satan to waste her, to reduce her capacity, will be wasted away by heaven. The angel of a miracle, we read about Peter in our prayers tonight, I uh, will talk about Peter, how the angel of Peter's miracle was sent the night he was to be slain and he delivered Peter. Father, send the angel of this sister's miracle. I don't know her name. If you know her, you, her name, you can mention the name. Father, send the angel of her miracle. Let that angel heal her beyond the doctor's imaginations, beyond the doctor's expectation to baffle them that this was what we were thinking. This was what we saw. But this is what is happening in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost heal her. Holy Spirit heal her. Let her experience divine recovery. Yeah. Immediate recovery. Instant recovery. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Lord, I pray for that daughter of yours. That by your mercy, you will stretch forth your hand and of healing. You said the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Let the son of righteousness, Jesus Christ the healer, the greatest physician, arise who went about doing that. Healing! Healing all! Healing all! Jesus, the son of righteousness, arise with healing in your wings. Fly fast into the life of that daughter of Zion, of God, and heal her of every sickness, of injury in the brain, bleeding in the brain, or any other complication that she might have sustained in the name of Jesus. Baffle the doctors the way you will make a whole in the name of Jesus. Father, we trust that if two of us or more shall agree on anything shall be done by you our father in heaven as we have prayed let her have a testimony in the name of jesus i know others might have different requests they may be saying oh if i knew they would pray about this i should have also posted it or sent it to them whatsoever their requests are i am praying most high god that you will read their requests and answer their prayers miraculously in jesus name thank you jesus in jesus name we are praying Thank you very much. Over to you, Sister Princess. God bless everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you, bro. And God bless Thank everyone you. who is here this evening to pray along with us. Um, I pray that all your requests, everything that you presented to the Lord, you'll find answers in Jesus' name. You know, prayers are like seeds. You know, when you plant the seeds, maybe people don't even know when you have planted those seeds. But when they see the beautiful flowers and they see the fruits coming out of that tree, they see a tree that grew up so, so big, so great. And they wonder and they feel, oh, he got more sun or she got more light or she got more water. They did not take the time to plant their own seeds 
They did not take the time to water the seeds that they might have planted a long time ago. And they think that I would, I would flourish with the prayers of my parents. So it's just luck, sheer luck. I can tell you that so many people have enjoyed, are enjoying a better life, enjoying great marriages, enjoying great success because of the prayers they prayed many years ago as young people, as single people. You don't know how much and how far prayer can go. You can see from the story of Daniel that the prayers that he was praying in his room all alone, it was causing chaos in heaven. And Angel, Angel Michael was struggling to bring the answer for him. And some people just live their lives. They think, yes, I'll get married. I'll talk about it. I'll just jest around and play around and just do it the talking way, do it my own way, do it the smart way, do it the way they're doing it around me. They think they know best, but you're wiser to drop it all in the hands of the Lord. You know, that song says in the hollow of his hands, I am safe and secured in the hollow of his hand. When you drop it for God in the hollow of his hands, yeah, like there, you, you know that it's safe. Your prayer request, God is working on it. You might not see it, you might not know, but there's a, there's a great thing that you've done tonight. Don't ever stop praying. My sister, my brother, my friend, don't ever stop praying. Keep taking it to the Lord in prayer. Even when you think you seem not to find answers yet, keep taking it to God in prayer. Keep praying about it. Keep praying about it. And when it will happen, sometimes most people don't even know when the miracle has taken place. You know, but by and by, when we get to heaven, you realize you will get to understand the import of some of the prayers that we have made, even if we don't understand it on this side of eternity. God bless you. And, uh, and for some of you who want to pray again with this prayer um, points, you, you do well to subscribe to the YouTube channel, join the YouTube channel and do a continuous prayer. You know, keep praying. It's never, it's never too much to pray. And the Lord will answer all our prayers in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining. On this note, we'll say have a good night and see you again first Friday of the month of September. Good night for you who are in the sleeping zone, <laughs> in the, where you are already sleeping. And for us, it's still evening. Uh, good evening. Thank you. And God bless you. Until next time. Bye.